Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Mind Blown Zone podcast, episode 25. This one is titled, Do You Know Your Rights? Here's the intro. Most people think that they know their rights, but in fact, very few do. In truth, we were deliberately not taught our most basic and fundamental rights by those in charge of our system of commercial warfare. By not properly <clears throat> By not properly educating us on our inherent rights, the controlling cabal are able to take advantage of us economically, morally, legally, and most important, spiritually. The bottom line is, if you don't know your rights, you effectively don't have any, and you will be taken advantage of by a legal system designed to foster greed. How are you mm. doing, Brad? Ouch! I'm never better, but that's a brutal opening right there, isn't it? Yeah, it makes you feel like you probably want to know your rights. Yeah, you just, you can feel it in your gut, you know, you shift in your seat a little bit. You're just like, oh, ah, geez, I don't know. <laughs> Hard to believe. It's uh, mind-blowing material. Yeah. So uh, we have got a really interesting uh, group of topics here. Uh, the way, what we're going to go through is we're going to explore this idea that if you don't know your rights, you don't have any. Okay, that, that's, that's kind of the central linchpin of this podcast. Then we're going to go into defining what rights are. We're going to talk about where rights come from. Uh, that's going to be a really interesting one because uh, we're going to make a distinction that rights don't come from where most people think they come from. Uh, we're going to talk about rights versus uh, privileges and benefits. We're going to talk about this very interesting idea of your private persona versus your public persona and how rights uh, and privileges and benefits go with each of those. And we're going to talk about rights infringement, interactions with the police, and then how to spread words about our rights, spread the word about our rights. Sound like a good uh, selection, Brad? It's a, it's a great outline. Looking forward to getting into all those. Now, I understand that you wanted to preface this, uh, this discussion with something. Do you want to yeah, just really that? quickly. The, go ahead. Were you going to say something? No, no, no. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to make this clear to people because as they begin to hear this material and you know what are you know my thoughts and your thoughts about the legal system and so forth, there, there's there's this tendency to think, well, if we get rid of the legal system, then everyone's just going to go around assaulting and stealing and murdering and everything else because there's no more law. And nothing could be further from the truth than that. So what I wanted to make clear is that none of this applies to you and if you cause harm or violate somebody else's rights. Doesn't the, whether it's illegal or lawful, doesn't matter. You must experience the consequences of causing harm, loss, or injury to another person. And therefore you must compensate them or spend time in jail for what you did. So that this is what we are really talking about here, of course, is our our rights, our freedoms, our rights, and victimless crimes against the state. Those are the things that are in question that we're gonna, you know, highlight tonight. Make sense? Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, glad we covered that. And uh, even more with you here, this central idea: if you don't know your rights, you don't have any. That's come from you. So how about you take us into that? Right. So I, I started this off by I wanted to say that the entire system of the legal system, which is not synonymous with lawful, even though we everybody believes that today because we've been brainwashed to believe that. If you don't understand that legality and lawfulness are two different things, you're going to be taken advantage of by those people who are operating in the legal system. It's we've all we I can say it even easier. You, me and everybody else who doesn't understand this stuff or didn't understand it until recently has been taken advantage of many times within the legal system. Completely unbeknownst to us, right? Well, it's ongoing and it's almost invisible. It's like a fish in water not knowing it's wet. Right. But one of the biggest problems is, is that we've accepted this legal system as real and true and needed and necessary. And that's just the way life is because no matter how long you've you've been alive, the legal system has been here really since 1872. So everybody on the planet is older than what is that? 2404. Everybody is under younger than 146 that's alive today. So if you're younger than that, you've been inside the legal system, which appears to be 
the, the right, just, lawful, honorable system. Mm -hmm. Yes? Yeah, it appears that our rights are what the legal system has defined them as. Yep. So the statutory system is the is the legal system. We've talked about this in several other of the podcasts already. And really what it's for is for people who are ignorant or children or imbeciles, which is how <laughs> we are all treated by not having this explained to us. In Inside the legal system, each one of us that doesn't have an education in a law school, uh, a bar card, is either a child, an imbecile, or uh, uh, an invalid. Basically, you're helpless. And that's why you need an attorney, because they aren't. They're trained inside the legal system. And that's why most people hardly ever say a word unless they get up on the stand to testify. It's always somebody doing the talking for you, because the assumption is you don't know what's going on. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, it certainly appears that way. You know, in short, the legal system prides itself on acting honorably. And if you aren't trained on that, you don't really have to be trained if you treat your fellow men and women with uh, respect. But the legal system, you know, the key to it is acting honorably. And most people who start to learn this kind of stuff, this lawful patriot guru kind of, you know, uh, national kind of thing, don't act, don't behave honorably. And so they get trampled by the legal system anyway we'll mm -hmm. get into that a little bit later yeah kind of the first so, instinct is when you find out that the legal system is in some ways you know taking advantage of you and other people you want to kind of get angry and go yell at the judge or yell yep, at yep. uh legal system representatives which is dishonorable right. it's dishonorable and there's nothing worse you can do because it doesn't matter whether you're right or you got the facts and the truth behind you if you're dishonorable you're going to pay a, a stiff penalty for behaving like a jackass and it's mm -hmm. happened time and time and time and time again. So it's always key thing to remember is you have to behave honorably and treat everybody with respect. Even if you're not being treated respectfully, you have to treat the judge and the attorneys, everybody in the courtroom respectfully. And in mm -hmm. doing so, you've passed the main test of the legal system, which is to remain in honor. So something a lot of people miss when they learn this stuff. They, they, they treat everybody as an adversary in that room. And the fact is, is that all those people in that room are acting as something else, even though they are men and women behind the act, they are acting in the legal system and they can't hear a word you're saying. They literally can't understand what you're saying. They're speaking legalese and you're speaking English, They're two different languages, even though you think you, you understand their legal words, you don't. Mm -hmm. So... It gets a little complicated here, but that's the basic idea. I don't want to go too far down that path today. But in short, not, we as a people have not taken on the responsibility of learning the legal, the, what the legal system is and what the lawful system is, the difference between the two and how to navigate them. And the people who control this world don't want you to know the difference between the two or how to navigate them. So they aren't going to teach it to you in the public education or in a university. So you have to learn it outside of the you know, mainstream establishment institutions. Make sense? Okay. Oh, yeah. And I think I'll add on to the end of this. The reason why all this is relevant to the central idea of if you don't know your rights, you don't have any, is because you know, what we've been pointing out here with this discussion of the legal system is that it exists because we, A, uh, don't know how to conduct ourselves with honor, and B, don't really take responsibility to live according to rights. Right? We have not retake, taken responsibility for ourselves, for a place in the world. Something Putin said uh, was rights go hand, hand in hand with responsibility. You, know, you, can, right. you can live according to your rights when you've taken responsibility for yourself in this world. And that's just something that we haven't done. So we're like, you know, these billions of people that need a legal system to like take care of us, like a, like, like a, like a nanny state kind of thing, taking care of these, uh, children imbeciles that don't know how to conduct themselves right right and that's who perhaps it's for. brad you could go off that and point out why that means that you you kind of don't have rights right well, this, this last bullet i wanted to say this last bullet here which is that the legal system is designed to for imbeciles ignoramuses and infants those are the three eyes that's how we're treated and it's designed to strip you of your rights as much as it can to extract the most blood and treasure out of you. 
That's that's if that is exactly what it's for. It's for basically handling a bunch of babies. Right. So if you want to remain a baby and you want to remain ignorant of this, then there's a system in place for you. And a lot of people argue that we should get rid of the legal system. Well, we can't because there's too many ignorant ignoramuses and imbeciles and infants out there in the world that we still need it to handle them. Right. So you don't get rid of the legal system. You learn your rights. You learn what's, what's lawful and what's legal. And then you, you extract yourself by taking back your power in effect. Mm-hmm. Um, what was the question? I, mean, I, I already talked about crimes against the state, victimless crimes, right? In other words, no, but, no, but you haven't caused wrong, harm, wrong, or loss to anybody when you get a speeding ticket or when you get a parking fine or when you drive without your seatbelt, right? Those are, those are victimless crimes. And most crimes are victimless. So they're not crimes at all in reality. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, I can... if, if I can just mention just the, the key point here is like the reason you don't have any rights is if, if you're, let, let me put it like this. If you're ignorant of your rights, then you need the legal system. And in the legal system, you don't have rights, okay? It's a stand-in thing for you to op- to operate for you without rights if you don't know how to conduct yourself rightfully. Right. Like for, for, a, a really it. good example. Yeah. A, a, a real simple example is people. a lot of people here in America know this thing called Miranda rights, and that's based on a case Miranda versus the state of Arizona or something like that where, uh, you know, effectively somebody said – the, the police asked too many questions or got some information that they shouldn't have gotten to convict this person. And as it turns out, the person didn't want to talk about it. But basically, we have the Miranda rights, and you you hear it where the cop says they're putting the, the handcuffs on. I say, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you can and say, anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. Do you wish to say anything? Right. If they don't read you those Miranda rights in, before they start questioning you, then you could throw out all the things you told the cops. That's so. This is an example of people think, well, these are my rights. I have the right to remain silent, and you do. And in many cases, in most cases, you probably should remain silent. People think of that as their that, that's a right that I have, but it goes way, way past that on what rights you really do have. For instance, did, did you agree to have a pe- police officer or a judge tell you what to do? Like, so another man or woman is telling you you can't walk over here on this public sidewalk because I said so. When did you agree to that contract with them? You didn't agree to it. So they just stripped you of your rights right there. Because the police officer told you that you, you can't walk into this grocery store without a mask on. Where, what, where's the law? Well, there is no, it's a, it's a mandate. It's a corporate policy. That's not a law. And I didn't agree to this. You see where I'm driving at with this? How they strip your rights without you even recognize it? Oh, yeah. That's the idea. 100%. So you hear um, a lot of these. Oh, go ahead. Did you want to mention this offering acceptance idea, and then we'll go into actually I defining did. rights? It's it's a huge Different. idea. And you can you can really boil this whole our whole interaction out in the public with offer and acceptance. Everywhere you go, you're being made offers, and you're either accepting them or rejecting them. And a ton of those offers are stripping you of your rights. You could have an endless discussion on this, right? But you know you you're offered you're offered to sign up for a social security card. You're you're told you have to, right? But you don't have to. It's an offer, and just ninety nine percent of the people accept it. Your mother was offered to sign a birth certificate when you were born. She didn't have to sign it, but she would have gotten a tremendous amount of pressure from the doctors, from who knows the administration at the hospital to sign it, and she would be told all these benefits that she gets from signing it. So. They would do everything they could to convince her to sign it. But in actuality, it's just an offer and she didn't have to accept it. She could have had you and walked out of there without signing a birth certificate. Right. Same thing with a bank bank account or taxation. Taxation is an offer, believe it or not. And whether or not you choose and agree to be a taxpayer is up to you. Most people choose to agree to it, but it's just an offer. That's why it's voluntary. And it's even been said in the, the U.S. Congress that Income tax is voluntary. If you can almost oh, believe that. Oh, it's actually that. been said. Hmm. I wasn't aware that it has actually been it, said. It has been said by the you know IRS commissioner or whatever. So once you accept the offer, you 
you let go of your rights and you accept what are known as privileges and benefits. And we'll kick into that as we keep moving along. So that's that section. Okay, then. All right. So I think we've established the the position that most of us that we're kind of in here, that because we didn't know where rights, our rights, we're in this legal system where we don't have rights. So now we need to kind of reset and we need to go back and define rights. We need to look at how these things come to be, right? So defining rights. Conceptually, rights are freedoms that man or woman must experience in a society in order to live. Okay, rights are not the things written on the constitution, right? Rights are not the things written in the statutes. They are freedoms that people must experience in a society in order to live. Like what is right for people in society? So that which is right for a man or woman in society are the rights, okay? So the rights referred to in the constitution are these freedoms. The, the constitution doesn't say, doesn't cause rights, okay? It writes them down for us to be aware of, okay? What do you think about that, Brad? Well, it's it, the constitution is a reminder to what the right, the, the framers of it knew that the government would try to infringe upon them. So that the, the Bill of Rights is a reminder to them that the people, your boss, your bosses, retain all these rights and freedoms. That's what the Bill of Rights right. is. Right. So, yeah, that's a key point. They're, they're reminders. They, they exist independent of the Constitution because rights are inherently understood like by reason, right? If, if it weren't for the media and the government going on and telling you a whole bunch of propaganda about what, what, what your supposed rights are, which is all false, you, you would just understand it immediately. And, and it's simple right. to understand because an action is wrong if it causes harm, loss, or injury to others, right? So right. It, it's that simple. <laughs> if you can just sit there and just reason and think about it like, hmm, what would be right in this case? And it's just, if the action causes harm, loss, or injury to another, it's wrong. And then everything which is left over is right. Right. It's, it's the golden rule to even make it simpler, right? Do unto others as you would mm -hmm. have them do unto you. So do you have the right to play your rock music at full blast at midnight? You, you do, technically, right? There's no law that says you can't do that, but you know your upstairs neighbors and next door neighbors may not be too happy about that. And would they like it when, would you like it when they were playing, blasting their music at midnight on a night when you were trying to get some sleep? They probably wouldn't be. So you've caused some injury to them, right? They can't sleep. So that's just a real simple example of checking if you don't if you don't if you're not sure whether you have that right or not you can check it that way right and i think something else that makes it easier to check easier to, for, for you to reason this out is to i mean we don't have to change the language and how we use this thing but if if you distance yourself from this idea of having rights and you just ask the question what is right it's, it becomes a lot easier sure because yeah. if you say, say is it right for me to blast music at that time yeah, that, 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 that's, that's simpler, right? Well, no, it's not right because it's going to annoy the hell out of other people. And they didn't come right. here to be annoyed so much. Right. You could say, well, I, well, I got to get to bed early tomorrow night. What, what is when my neighbor turns their music up tomorrow night when I'm trying to sleep? I'm not going to be too happy about that. Right. I? So, simple right. example. And you could also, uh, also ask yourself, prior to there being a society, would people agree to live in a society where it's okay for you to blast your, you know, hundred watt amplifier <laughs> in the middle of the night. And the answer would right. be no, you wouldn't agree to live in that society because yeah, there might be, that would be a sucker apartment society. complex, right? But there might be somewhere an apartment complex where rock and rollers live. And, and that's the deal when you move in there is that you can practice your electric guitar at full blast all at all hours of the day. And everybody agrees that lives in your apartment complex. Right. So exactly. In that so, place, you have the rights. Go ahead. Right. I mean, the, you know, rights have no context outside of a society. They are, they're contextual to societies, right? What is right for this particular society, right? It's not just like, it's not just they're, they come from nowhere. They come from an analysis of people living in a society and what is right for the society. Right. Right. And everybody agrees to abide by those. 
Right. So we're we're starting to touch on these ideas and we're, we're getting pretty deep into them of where the rights come from. So maybe you could just elaborate a bit more on where people think from rights come from, this whole, whole idea of the constitution giving rights and even going to into the uh, Ninth Amendment, Brad. Yeah, I mean, you just hear this all the time. People say you they they trampled our constitutional rights, or they're trying to trample my constitutional rights, or you know, the constitution gives me the right to, but like yada yada yada, right? You hear it all the time. But the assumption is is that mm -hmm. we've, we've gotten we've gotten our rights from this document that a bunch of men wrote 250 years ago, mm -hmm. right? But that's not mm -hmm. it at all. Again, it was a reminder to the government that, that these are the rights of the citizens, the state citizens, as they were called back then, and. Even I think I, you know, I've heard someone say that there were over, over two hundred uh, amendments that all the framers wanted. Samuel Adams and Patrick Henry and all the rest wanted over two hundred, and they knew they had to boil it down because it was just going to be a huge document. And so they boiled it down to the ten. But the Ninth Amendment says the enumeration in the Constitution of certain rights shall not be construed to deny or disparage others retained by the people. Those are right. Just because they didn't write it down in the Constitution doesn't mean you can take away other rights that I have. Right? Mm -hmm. That's what the whole point yeah. of the Ninth Amendment. That's the, that's the whole Ninth Amendment. Right. And it reminds so, me of um, you know, when you go to a website or deal with a company or something, it'll say all rights reserved. That's kind of like a personal Ninth Amendment kind of thing. Like anything that is not mentioned here in all the legal talk that we provided, re regardless of that. All rights are reserved. So it doesn't matter what's written down or anything. Rights are reserved. That's right. Whether they're listed or not. That's right. And a lot of the constitutional gurus, the lawful gurus, will tell you to, every time you make a signature, write that those exact words after your signature. All rights reserved? All rights reserved without prejudice. Without prejudice. Not, right. we're not, we're not, we won't get into that prejudice thing today. But yeah, that's, that's how they say every sing signature you lay down, write those things down with it. To let the person who you're contracting with know all your rights are reserved so that mm -hmm. they can't trample them. Right, right, right. So you're, you're, I'm signing this, I'm signing this paper, but I'm also, and you should probably write all rights reserved before you even sign it, right? Oh, you write it with your signature. You write it with your signature, right? Yep. To give it that extra context. So just be aware. I'm only signing this in the context of I have all my rights. That's right. I reserve all my rights. Okay. So they can't come, come up with something that wasn't in the contract that somehow takes your rights away down the road if there's a controversy. Mm -hmm. I reserve my right to speak freely. I reserve my right to travel freely or whatever. Right. right. I mean, 99 out of 100 times, it doesn't matter. But the one time it does matter, you wish you signed that way. Mm -hmm. So... Because we're saying, you know, the, the the Constitution or some things that people wrote on paper anywhere don't give people rights. That doesn't how it's not how it works, right? Like we are endowed with the faculty of rationality, faculty of reason, and we are able to look objectively at situations and determine what is right. It's as simple as that. That's how you determine what is right. You've got a few things yep. here, Brad. If you do wrong to someone, you wanna you wanna go into that, and then the few next few things. Well, it came from my caveat at the beginning, right? But if you cause wrong, harm, or loss to somebody, you have to compensate them, whatever it is. You wreck their car, you steal their thing, you break their house, you break their toy, whatever it is, right? You've got, it's your job, if you're acting as an honorable man or woman in the world, to not, you, don't, you shouldn't have to go to court. You shouldn't have to fight this out in front of a judge. You should right. know you owe that person for the damage you caused them. Right. And if, if everybody behaved that way, then their court cases would drop to a minimum. And there'd only be, you know, the most obscure, difficult situations would ever end up in a court of law. Because yeah. everybody would recognize that they've caused wrong, harm, or loss to somebody. Yeah. When, when we say any rational person can look at a situation and determine what is right, that should include the perpetrator of the wrong. Right. <laughs> they should actually right. be able to look, reflect back and go... Oh yeah, I see what happened here. I did this and it was wrong for these reasons. And I can objectively determine how much wrong that I've done. And then I will now compensate them without right. any judge telling me what to do or even a jury. And then you've right. compensated the person and it's done. Right. And if the if the victim is also a rational, reasonable person, then they would agree. Well, you, you totaled my car 
uh, my car cost $50,000. So I want $50,000, not I want $10 million for, you know, lifelong injury and, and right. you know, and make up all this stuff and, you know, try to soak you down to the, oh, you're a, a billionaire. I'm going to take you to court for a hundred million, right? That's mm-hmm, the way mm-hmm. our lit- litigious society has evolved, right? So everyone's just trying to get as much as they can from everybody else. When the, the honorable thing to do would be to buy that person a new car and pay, if they have medical bills, you pay the medical bills, right? Right. I mean, granted, insurance is supposed to handle all that, but I'm just saying it as you know, an obvious example. Right. So, and it goes back to this point: if you don't know your rights, you can't, you don't have them. All right. If 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 the victim and the perpetrator can't use their rational faculty to determine the wrong that has been down on the appropriate compensation, well, you need a legal system. And right. as long as That's we need for, a legal system, we don't have rights. <laughs> That's right. That's for babies, ignoramuses, and imbeciles. Who can't handle their own okay. affairs. That's who that's for. Uh, did you want to mention the God Must Be Crazy point here? Oh, yeah. That's one of, that's, that's one of my all-time favorite movies. So I, I, just, I think I mentioned that while we were putting this outline together. Just the, the Coke bottle idea. For those of you who haven't seen it, this uh, this tribe of uh, Africans in Kenya is just living this, you know, harmo- Was harmonious. Was it not Botswana? Thing. Could have been Botswana. I don't know. It's right, somewhere in Central Africa. And a okay. uh, a guy flying his plane over is drinking a Coke and he wings it out the window, this Coke bottle, and it comes whipping down into their village. One of the guys finds it and they don't know what it is. They think it's a gift from the gods. And everybody, all of a sudden, all the people in in the village start finding these unique uses for it, but it's the only one. And eventually they start fighting over it. It's the first time that they've ever seen their, it causes disharmony amongst the villagers, right? Some women are using it to beat out the wheat and, you know, some are using it to, blow it like a like a musical instrument and they start fighting over it and so that, that's the story is that the leader of the of the uh, tribe has to take it and throw it off the end of the earth because it's actually uh, you know a, a demonic devilish thing so he, he goes off to try to throw it off the end of the earth that's the that's the gist of the movie uh, but effectively it's the first time everybody starts violating others rights because they're greedy mm-hmm. and selfish make sense right yeah, yeah yeah so the greed and the selfishness comes in the fear and the judgment comes in people like, and I'm not just talking about the movie. I'm talking about <laughs> humanity. Then we start getting fighting and violating each other's rights. Then a legal system comes along to uh, keep, us in, keep us in honor. Yeah. And then now it's our job to figure out how to be honorable, conduct ourselves rationally, you know, be objective. And then we won't need the legal system and we transcend. Right. <laughs> so, and, and people just will argue. thing. People argue, well, I, I would be that way, but everybody else wouldn't be that way. And that's part of what we'll end this with is we have to spread the word. We'll get into that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's it always starts with you. You can't wait for everybody else to change and fix things before you go. You got to be a leader in your circles and start it off and then it spreads. All right. Okay. So what do we get, Brad? If we, if we can't mm-hmm. take responsibility for ourselves and we can't have rights, then what do we get instead? Well, we get privileges and benefits, of course, from the government. That's our our benefactor, right? That's the that that's great. we've been brainwashed into believing is that these are good things and we want to have privileges and benefits. So the problem, of course, is that in order to get those, you have to sacrifice your inherent natural rights. That's the part they don't mm-hmm. tell you about. Now they they may tell you that you're getting these rights. Oh, if you sign up for this, you get these rights. But those were rights you should have. Anyway, as a free man or woman, and that, that shouldn't need to be given to you. So there are privileges and benefits given to you above and beyond your natural rights when you agree to the offer, when you accept the offer that the agency or bureau is offering, is giving you. So that's the, that's the swap you make. You get privileges and benefits, but you lose your rights. And a maximum of law that I say all the time is he who creates controls. So God created man or whatever. The creator created man. Man created government. Government created citizens. So who controls citizens? Government. Who controls government? Man and woman. Which are you? Are you a man or are you a citizen? You can't be both in terms of the legal system. You got to be one or if one I or can the just other. clarify, Brad. I, get, I, I imagine it can get confusing. Like uh, Government created citizens is like, well, wait, if you have the wrong definition of citizen in your head, that that's uh, like, well, ho- hold on, what? To be clear, citizen is a legal fictional entity, right? It's a it's a concept for you to put yourself into and say that I'm right. one of these defined on paper. 
It's not a real thing. It's a political status is what it really is. Political status. And so you would never say, I am a citizen. You could say, my political status is a citizen of the United States, but I am mm. not a citizen. I'm a man. And that's when you start making the distinguishment. Right? If you Even can perhaps legal through all system status rather than political might be more appropriate. It's that's what it's what they call it as a political status. So I stick with what it's known by by most people. Okay, descriptively, sure. <laughs> so that's that's the way they use it. So I'll use it. That. So you're not you're not a citizen, but that is your political status. You always remain a man or a woman, and your political status is Australian citizen, U.S. citizen, whatever. So if you mm -hmm. begin to make those, if you begin to distinguish between the two, now the judge and the attorney is going to have a hard harder time dealing with you because you don't agree to their fictional status. Just like you're not a driver. Mm -hmm. Are you a driver? Matt, are you a driver? Uh, no. You would, you would easily get tricked into that if you don't understand any of this. I'm not a driver. I'm a man, right? Well, were you were you operating this motor vehicle? No, I was traveling in my private property, <laughs> right? That's This is the game, right? Mm -hmm. A driver is, is a fictional entity in, in the legal system. Motor vehicle is a fictional description of a mode of transport in the legal system. If you agree to all those things, right. then they, su they suck you in. You lose your rights. Right. So all these things like driver, citizen, et cetera, they're written down in the legal system of what the of what the privileges and benefits that are afforded to this uh, concept are and the things that cannot and right. can be done. And right. if you it's say just that like, you're that, then yeah. you're like, oh, yeah, I just sign up for all these rules. It, it's just like if you go, if you take a job at a corporation, it's the same thing. When you take a job working for McDonald's or IBM or wherever, you agree to their policies and procedures in the employee handbook, whatever they are. Mm -hmm. And most people, of course, agree to those because they want to make the money into working in these places. So they go along with whatever rules and policies they have in place. It's the same thing with the government. So the citizen is effectively an employee of the government. And the citizen does not have rights. A citizen has... Well, you have certain rights, benefits. but you have just far fewer rights than a man has. It's not like you have no rights, right? But you have lesser rights than a man. Well, I still think only men and women have rights. The citizens are conce legal concepts that don't have rights. They just yeah, have they don't exist. What what is allowed and not allowed according to a legal system? Right. So if you want to go that route, yeah, they don't even exist. So how could they have rights? <laughs> They're fictional entities. So I think we close this off just with saying no privileges and benefits are greater than your natural rights. They could, ne they could never be. A man or okay. woman acting for the government could never give you more than you've already been given. Right. <laughs> Simply put. All right. So where were we? So this is my little late insertion, but I wanted to throw this idea out here and you'll, you'll hear certain people speak of this. Uh, of the public versus the private domain. And to be very simple and clear, right, the public domain is the domain of the legal system. And you have, so you have a public persona and it's known as your straw man, your all capitals letter name. That is to make this as simple as possible with a metaphor, that's like your game piece, like the top hat or the race car in the game of Monopoly. So that enables you to enter the board of commerce, commercial warfare, commerce. Mm -hmm. So that allows you to get a birth certificate. Now the birth certificate allows you to get a driver's license and a social security card and a bank account and sign a loan at a bank and so forth, right? All those things you need to operate in the world of commerce. But it's not you. It's your game piece in the game of Monopoly. Making sense so far? Oh yeah, I love it. You, you would, if you were playing Monopoly, you would never actually believe that you are the game piece right that's the shift in your mentality you have to you have to see this you have to start to see that this public thing with your all capital letter name on all your licenses and bank accounts and legal documents social security card that's a fictional thing made up that's designed to sap money out of you and allow but allows you to play the game so some people will get go down this path where they want to they want to get rid of their driver's license and they want to change their passport or try to get diplomatic immunity and they want to sacrifice their social security card and do all these different things to, to get themselves disentangled from the public straw man, all caps name. But in my mind, that's 
not worth it. It's complicated and it complicates your life forevermore. Like you could never rent a car or get a hotel ever again. You can't get a bank account. You can't get a credit card. Well, you can get a credit card, one of those secured credit cards, but that's a tricky matter too. But you can't travel overseas without a passport and on, on and on I'm going to go. So if you're willing to sacrifice all those things and you just want to live like a hermit on your you know, homestead for the rest of your life, maybe that would be okay for you. But for most people, they want to maintain, they, they're enjoying the game of Monopoly and they want to keep playing the game. So you, you just need to learn to identify when you're dealing with your Monopoly piece versus your actual self. And that's the private mm -hmm. you. That's the first, the first letter of your name is capitalized. You know, the, the, and all the rest of the letters are lowercase. That's the real you in effect. And if you can distinguish between the two, then you can move through life smoothly. And more importantly, you can take advantage of, sometimes it benefits you to have the driver's license so that the cop doesn't throw you in jail or you want to rent a car when you go on vacation and on and on and on, right? So there are times when you have to have those things in order to do certain things in life. So you just wear that hat when you need to. So you keep your driver's license. You just realize that it's the driver's license isn't you. Mm -hmm. That's your monopoly piece on the game board. Making a little bit of sense? The, the funny thing about the difference between the game Monopoly and the game that we're playing is in Monopoly, when you pass go, you get $200. But in this game, when you pass go, you pay $200. Yeah, in good taxes. point. <laughs> yeah, and, and, on, and on and on we go, right. Some people right. get rid of their driver's license and they try to deregister their car. And that's a nightmare for you. You're going to get pulled over every other day, right? And and you think you think the police understand all this stuff? Nope, they don't know any, anything you're talking about. They just say, "Yeah, you're going to jail." So the question is, right. is it worth it? Is that worth it in your life? You can't even drive to the grocery store without getting pulled over and thrown in jail. It's not worth it. But as I said earlier, yeah, and as we'll say later, as word spreads and more and more people start to realize this, then the cops will start to realize this, and the judges will start to realize this, and we've caught onto their mm -hmm. game. And when there's a, a big enough majority that's doing this, then the whole tide will change. The big challenge here is the people who created the game uh, hired people who totally don't know it's a game and think that you are your monopoly piece. So all the police, all the judges, the lawyers, you know, government professionals think that you are your monopoly piece. Everybody And does. they treat you like it. Yeah, well, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> They're only only the people at the very t tippy top that made the game or are in on the secrets know that it's not this way. Everybody else thinks this, and they don't want us to know the trick because they're going to lose money and lose power when we realize what they did. Which okay. requires just not being ignorant, taking responsibility learning for yourself, on and on and on. It takes all those things. You can't just listen to our podcast and say, ah, I got it now. I know what I'm doing. No way. Mm -hmm. Experiential takes, shift required. Takes a lot of understanding and listening and learning for people. And sooner or later, you pick it up and it clicks and you get it. And now you understand your rights. So where are we at? Rights uh, so infringement. This, yeah, this next topic is going to be really interesting. We're talking about rights infringements. Uh, so this is in a way like uh, how in the legal system, the the absence of rights exists. You know, we, we call it, we say, you know, to the people, oh, you're, you're, you're trampling my rights, you're, you're abusing my rights, you're infringing on my rights. Kind of, <laughs> kind of. But it's only when you're acting as if you are the monopoly piece that this happens to you. So it takes two to tango. You know, someone can't trample your rights really without you kind of agreeing to be the monopoly piece. In you a want to sense, go into, right. Do you want to clarify any of that? Because I felt that might have been a little shaky. Do you want to clarify it and then go into a few of these? Sure. So social media is a good place to start, right? So technically speaking, Facebook and YouTube and Twitter and all the rest, Instagram are private corporations. So, and you have to sign a, a, a term of service when you sign up for those that nobody ever reads. Why would you read it? You can't. If you don't check yes, then you can't use their, their thing. So it doesn't really matter what they say in that thing, right? They could say, we get mm -hmm. your firstborn child and we get, you have to give us a thousand dollars and right. When, who, everybody would keep clicking yes to it and we'd all be in big trouble. But what they, what they, here's what they claim. They, in one, on one half of the equation, they claim that they're not responsible if someone puts some, you know, horrible language or something illegal or, you know, how to build a bomb or whatever onto their platform. They said they're not responsible for it. 
right? They can't stop somebody from doing that, right? They try, but they can't be the arbiters of it. So they're indemnified from users of their platforms doing something illegal on their platform. But, on, but then on the other token, they're also treated as a public square. Uh, they're, well, not, they're treated as a public square. And for that reason, they're not held liable if someone does something wrong or unlawful or, or illegal on their platform. Now, on the other hand, they also want to maintain that they can set up whatever rules they want on their platform because they're a private company. Well, that allows them to censor anything that's truthful. And that's in effect, that's what they're all doing mm -hmm. and have done for many, many years. And it's gotten worse and worse over, over time. And like hate speech is something they love to. That's a made up idea, hate speech, right? That's up, up to them. They get to decide what hate speech is or isn't. Right. And they can censor you for it. So they get the benefits, the, the benefits on both sides, which means obviously that they're in league with the government who's giving them these free passes. So they're, they don't get in trouble if you do something unlawful on their site, uh, but they can also make up whatever rules they want to censor your free speech. Best of both worlds. Right. So when you sign up for a social media thing, you have to understand that the social media thing is a private corporation and corporations are in partnership with the owners of the legal system, right? Which I, I don't, I don't, I'm not specifically sure who that is. Maybe it's the, the London bar or something. I don't know. Do you want to quickly mention anything about that, I, Brad? Oh, I'd say they're all, all in the same club. How's that? George Carlin's big club that you ain't in. The big club. Yeah. The, the big, there's a big club and you ain't in it. Right. So, yep. so let's just call it, it the owners of the legal system. And <laughs> right. So you sign a contract with them and you know, when, and that means that they get to treat you how, how they want, right. According to the terms of service. Right. So if they censor you, your rights are not being trampled. You don't have rights on social media platforms because that's the legal system. Rights apply to men and women. Rights do not apply, apply to fictional entities where you have an avatar and a username and say stuff on the internet. Okay. And I'm not like, if I was saying this five years ago, I would think that I'm like against rights or against freedom or something like that. But it's not like that. It's just, they built a system. And if you agree and sign up and want to be in it, you don't have rights in it. Well, would you agree with that, Brad? No. Oh, well, yes and no. If, okay. if they if they agree to be public square, then they shouldn't be allowed to do that. And they are the and public square they? today. They this so this the pub the public square is the same as it back you know two hundred years ago or one hundred fifty years ago when there was no media or anything. That was the place you went, and they had a big notice board. They called it mm -hmm. right, and you would go and get your whatever your notice was, and you'd push it up there. Right, so and so are getting married on such and such a date. So and so just bought this tract of land from so and so, and that was the notice board. You let that was letting everybody who was interested know what's going on. So these social media companies have become the notice board, the public square yeah. for us. I'm you see, I, I don't completely agree with that. Like, I think it's, if it's in the contract that they are the public square, then it's like that. But if it's not, then it's not. Well, that's it. And that, whether someone is. considers something a public square is kind of like neither here nor there. But the government treats them like that by saying we won't. You're not. You're not in trouble for pe what pe other people do on your platform. They accept okay. that benefit from the government, but then they. But then, so they shouldn't have. They shouldn't censor people. Like if someone writes some horrible, awful thing, right? It should be allowed to stay up there, on their mm -hmm. platforms, right? Because it's a public square. But no, then they turn around and say, now they turn around and say, no, we can say we can have whatever we want done. So okay. the, the only pl the only place in the world I know of right now that totally does this is Gab, hundred percent public square. Right. You can say whatever you want there, and you know because that's the only place those people have a loud voice over there, which sh shies people away from it because you you you'll see their comments. But if everybody in the world was going to Gab, then th their comments would get downloaded and pushed down to the bottom, and they would never right. be able to have as, as loud a voice as the people who weren't saying these horrible, awful, hateful things. Mm -hmm. But that's the, the whole point of the First Amendment is to protect the rights of the people that are saying things that are unpopular, right? That's the mm -hmm. whole point of it. So that's okay. the idea. And, and media is the You're same. Media to... just doesn't let anybody come on. They just don't let any person onto their platforms that aren't saying what they the media has been told to let allow onto their platforms. Mm-hmm.
right? That's why they had to get rid of Tucker Carlson. That's why they had to get rid of, you know, Glenn Greenwald and Matt Taibbi and some of these other people that have been slowly dropping off. They started to say too many things that are truthful. And so the media just got rid of them. Don't need them anymore. By the way, do you see how many views that Tucker Trump interview got? I like wasn't aware that there was a Tucker Trump interview because I don't pay attention to that anymore. It's like 250 million views. <laughs> it's like uh, blew away everything else in the history of social media. Interesting. Well, if, if it's that big, I might take a look. It's interesting. <laughs> it, it, yeah, it just, Shall we look it's at just uh, more, guns? More of the same from Trump. So yeah, guns is another idea where our rights have been trampled. Like I, you, well, I, you can't even buy a gun in Australia, but I can't buy a gun unless I go down to the gun shop and get a background check. You can get a gun in Australia. Can you? Yep. It's got to be. Uh, it's got to be under all these different strictures and rules and all this other stuff. That, that right? You got to be like a professional right. marksman or Tons. a duck hunter, right? So they're, they're, they've. You don't have that First Amendment thing written down like we do, or Second Amendment. But the point is, is that our rights have been taken away. So if I had a felony on my record or whatever, and that was the flag to say, "Don't sell this guy a gun," I couldn't buy a gun. And people think, well, that's good. That's right. We well, should be able to. But again, it's this, the, if I'm, if I want a gun bad enough, no matter how many felonies I have, I can, I know I can go get one on the black market, right? Someone will sell me a gun somewhere. So these rights that have been taken mm -hmm. away from us and, and the second amendment says our right to buy a gun or to bear arms shall not be infringed. That's, that's very clear language, but a background check is an infringement on your rights. So just another example. Mm-hmm. Geez, we and talk about COVID every single broadcast. Oh, for, go ahead. If I can just mention on guns, like you know, part of the reason the government gets involved in this is because there's a lack of trust, right? Like the the, the thing that you mentioned is was like, oh, if someone's a, had a felony, right, well, then they shouldn't have to be able to get a gun. But if they've committed a felony, compensated the person, transformed themselves, then they can get a gun. Right. It's not factored right? in. But there's a lack of trust in the society. So until there's trust in the society, well, the legal system is required. Right. And the people that don't have a felony have been convinced by their brainwashing that this is good. Well, I don't have a felony, so it doesn't bother me. Right. But who mm -hmm. knows what you, you could get? You could get wrongfully charged with a felony. Right. Who knows how it can happen? But the, the, the point is very simple. They, they can't infringe upon our rights to bear arms. Anybody's rights. Mm hmm. Now, if you're a violent felon and you're out there buying guns and killing people all the time, you obviously you should be locked up, right? Nobody, nobody disagrees with that. You should be removed from society. Simple as that. So moving through okay. here, COVID got, lockdowns. Uh, COVID lockdown, right to travel. Yeah, or assemble, yeah, right? They shut down churches all over the place. You couldn't get on a plane without a, a vax passport on some airlines, and you couldn't get into countries, rather, without a vax passport, on and on and on, right? All our everybody's rights were completely infringed upon and trampled during COVID. Now, if you knew what you were doing, and that's because we all agreed. <laughs> well, we didn't all agree. And the people who didn't agree, who knew what they were doing, we all agreed. Didn't have to get a no. Fast we didn't pass. all agree. Too too <laughs> many of us have agreed. Let's let's uh, too many people yeah. agreed that yeah. the government is this uh, entity that allows us that that allows right. us to travel. You know, governments Remember, they set up a passport. <laughs> yeah places and they you know border checks right that's how it works yeah now no. it seems to work right but the point the point of this was that the people who knew that they didn't need a vax pass to get into a country were able to do it because they stood their ground and held on to their rights so they got past what everybody else sacrificed their rights for mm -hmm. simple as that i was definitely one of those people i was still traveling during that strife right. Right to own property, you know, like property tax, income tax. We've been over those a thousand times, but those are all rights that have been taken away because you don't, don't know any better. Mm -hmm. Crimes against the state, like a right to face your accuser. Like if you get a uh, traffic ticket or a speeding ticket, technically speaking, you should have the right to face your accuser. The, the police officer who wrote you the ticket is not, not the You didn't cause him any wrong, harm, loss, or injury. So if there's no, if there's no victim, there's no crime. That's the idea. But the Constitution gives you the right to face your accuser. It doesn't give you your right, but it reminds everyone that you have the right to face your accuser. And if there's no accuser, nobody who's harmed, then there's no penalty. Same with trial by jury. 
Constitution says that as well. You have a right to a trial by jury. How many people get a jury in all their traffic infractions and minor crimes against the state? None of them do, right? Mm -hmm. What we got next? Health. This was yours. What do you say about health? Well, the government was not hired to manage our health. It was very strange when, first of all, not that I believe that there was a COVID virus, but let's just give that leniency and let's just say the government's saying and all the health professionals are saying, there, there's a virus, there's a virus. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, what, what do you have to do with that exactly? Sorry? Like, uh, right. there's me, I'm a man, and what exactly do you have to do with my health in any way? I, I, I don't understand where you came in and thought you had the role, this role, but so many people gave away their own responsibility for their own health that the government sucked up the, the power vacuum and took on the responsibility. Right. That's true in every walk of life, but yeah, there's nothing, no, there's no time that, we, that the people who, who are the bosses of the government ever say, we want you to take care of our health for us. They just took it. <laughs> right. And we all sat there sucking our thumbs and we let them do it. Yeah. It's we like are. this uh, empty space and they're, they're like, we can uh, take this power, yeah? And we're like, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm busy doing something else. So, and I don't want to think about that. And I don't even really know. So I'm too lazy to do it. So yeah, you take it. Yep. But every time we do that, give our power away to them. Well, well, you get consequences, don't you? Suddenly you can't travel. And then, then you're in the fist, in the, you know, in your house, shaking your hand at the TV going, this is bullshit what the government's doing. <laughs> well, that's because you Take enjoy video games, and give it away. watching watching sports and drinking beers and and doing all the things you like. While you were doing that, you were slowly losing more and more of your rights. That's been happening for about mm -hmm. eight, nine, ten generations now. <laughs> all right, trampling rights. I think we think we kind of covered all that. I don't know if this does have to be a section here. Oh, Maybe just this well, living in a society of greed. I think is interesting. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I think, uh, you know, the judges, the police, the prosecutor, the defense attorney, right, they're all incentivized to get as much money out of you as they can. Mm -hmm. They all get paid and kickbacks and they all, they all want to stretch it out and add more time and add more appearances and more paperwork. And they just all they just get more and more money. So it's the, the how the system works in and of itself encourages, incentivizes greed. You know, a speedy trial that's settled lickety split is not in the benefit of any of the people within the legal system. And ironically, the Constitution says that you should only be tried once. There should, there should, the matter shall never be tried again. But we have appeal after appeals courts up and down all our states, everywhere you look. Appeals, 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 which goes against what the Constitution says. Can't be retried. So... It's interesting how, you know, the legal system, another word for it kind of almost is the commercial system. And the point of it is commerce, right? The point, point of it is capital accumulation. And I'm not against capital. Don't misinterpret me. But, you know, it's a it's the prioritization. And when it's prioritized above rights, you get problems. Yeah, that's what we have, right? Everything is about money, currency in reality. They got us all sucked into it. Consumerism. Mm -hmm. Capital. They got us all brainwashed into it. That's the most important thing in the world. There you go. I wanted to mention this section on interactions with police just to say that police, I think I mentioned it at the top, are policy enforcers. That's where the word police comes from, right? Swap the E out, put a Y in, you got policy. So they are enforcing the policies of the government. That's mm -hmm. their job. We used to have peace officers, justices of the peace. Now we have policy officers. And they follow the statutes, codes, and acts that the legal system has put out. So arguing, fighting, pushing against the police above and beyond uh, some very simple tactics that a lot of people use is a terrible idea. And you really can only get yourself in trouble. Usually when you interact with the police, you eventually get yourself into a place where you go along with what they're telling you. Of course, if, if it's not, you know, something horrible that they're doing and follow what they're saying and you deal with the judge, 
you know, at a later time when, you know, the fine or the penalty phase comes up. And when you're in that, in that setting and you can break out your knowledge and information that you know that you're a private man, not a public person. So in other words, the police don't know any better. They just, if you're not following what they say, if you're not doing what they instruct you to do, they're just going to throw the cuffs on you and take you to jail. Nine out of 10 times. So that's a bad outcome, no matter what, whether you're right or wrong, right? Yeah, well, you just, uh, <laughs> you cannot convince someone who doesn't know the slightest thing about where rights come from or what is right or wrong that they should treat you according to what is right. <laughs> right. More importantly, they have the guns and the batons and the tasers and you don't. So you're on the losing end of it every single time because it'll always come to that if they don't like you. So you can't create a conflict. If you create a con controversy with a police officer, you're asking for trouble. It's as simple as that. Remain an honor. Yeah, and when we say you shouldn't, we're, we're saying it for your own benefit, right? Not to be like, hey, don't treat police officers badly, even though we think you should treat everyone well, but that's not the reason we're saying it. Like, you're just wasting your time. If you're going to go up against someone who doesn't know your rights and try to argue and act dishonorably and try to get what you want, it's just, it's just a waste of time. I'd go way past a waste of time. It can you can cause yourself real harm sure. and damage. Who knows sure. what those cops are going to do to you, right? If you run into a bad cop, you you might be in big trouble, right? Maybe maybe five percent of them are like that, but you know ninety five percent of them are just going to you know cuff you up and throw you in jail. But maybe five percent of them are going to do something worse to you. Who knows what? Beat you up, knock you out, steal your money. Who knows? That's you know a bad outcome, no matter how you look at it. So usually. You go along with what they're saying. You say all rights reserved uh, without prejudice. You sign the speeding ticket and you you can go argue it with the judge in court. That's the way to play it. Or if you really know what you're doing, you can send notices into the court ahead of time before your appearance date and you can get the case expunged. Right? If, if the judge knows you know what you're doing and he knows you, he knows you know your lawful position as a man, he'll just say throw this one out. We don't, we don't need the headache. It's not worth $250 fine for the speeding ticket. But that's that's some next level lawful guru stuff you got to know to pull that off. Uh, can I mention this reasonable articulable suspicion point? You love it. Please do. Well, I'm generally in full support of the First Amendment auditors, uh, but uh, very often I hear them say, you need to have reasonable articulable suspicion that I've committed a crime. And they say it so proudly as if they, they think they're saying the right thing. And honestly, they're saying it, what they're saying is better than just letting cops walk all over them, but they're still getting it wrong because by saying there, you need a reasonable articulable suspicion of a crime, they're making an appeal to the statutory system, right? right. Like they're not, they're not making an appeal to rights. They're making an appeal to the legal system. Like they are identifying themselves as a, legal system governed entity which is lowering their self-esteem and lowering them it's saying i'm not a man i'm a subject of the legal system one step better oh. than this would be to appeal to the constitution you want to mention something i, I was just going to say that they're they're putting themselves in a position where they're going to be in controversy right mm -hmm. they're deliberately going into a setting to cause a controversy sure or they know what they're doing is going to cause a controversy. So at uh, that point, although I support it because they're spreading, it's their method of spreading awareness, you know? Right. It, it's, it's at that point though, that if they tried to behave like a man and act in public, they're in private, they're going to run into the same problems that you or I would, if we got pulled over for a speeding ticket, mm -hmm. they're not going to, they're not going to win against those police officers is what I'm saying, but you're right. They are appealing to statutes and codes. That's right. Right. So, so one step better would be to appeal to the Constitution, the Fourth Amendment, because in the Fourth Amendment, they need to have probable cause to violate your person or your papers, right? To search you, to get your identity. They need to have probable cause. And probable cause is where you go to a judge and you get a warrant and you can then right. inspect, right? Right. So that would be right. one step better. But here's an even better step where you don't appeal to words that have been written down on paper by 
others and inducted into a legal system, right? So here's, here's, here's the line. This is an infringement of the right to be secure in my, in my person, papers, and property as identified for you, the government, in the Fourth Amendment of the Constitution, right? So you're appealing to reason, rationality, and rights rather than things that are written down on paper. You like that one? Uh, it sounds great. I don't know if it's going to work. Oh, they're not going to understand it. <laughs> they're going to look at you like, what are you talking about? But at least so you, it's correct. You might as well have said something in Chinese to them. Mm -hmm. Right? That's the problem. So, again, the more people that know this, the more people that learn this, the more people that invoke their rights, the, the, the faster this works. And that leads us right into our next right. section, really, which is... Yeah, if, if I can want... mention something oh, to lead in as well, like just just one thing, Brad. Like, um, what what the reason I said this better line is not so much like, hey, go and say this to the police, right? It's more to spread the word amongst other people that this would be the right thing hypothetically to say if in the situation. That's just as powerful. Okay, take it away, Brad. All right. So as I've alluded to a couple times earlier, you know, the real key to this is we need more people that develop an interest in taking back their rights, learning their rights, learning how to stand for their rights, and make an effort to learn about this from a million different gurus out there. And I recommend people find as many as they can. It's not hard to do. Maybe we'll post some resources at the bottom of this video, if I can remember, uh, about some people that have some interesting things to say about this. And as you learn it, you begin to embody it. You begin to make it part of who you are. And when you embody it, you exude it out into the world and you spread it around. And people pick up on it and they get, they sense it. And the more people that do this, the more the police start hearing about it and the judges and the attorneys. And the next thing you know, we've got this, this shift right in the, the public awareness about what our rights are and what police can and can't do and judges can and can't do. And it just keeps growing and becomes better and better for everybody. And that's part of agreeing not to be an infant imbecile or ignoramus any longer and stepping up, becoming a responsible adult, learning what how this works, and of course, spreading it around, right? As, as I was mentioning, this is it doesn't work very well if only, you know, a thousand people or a hundred thousand people in the world know this stuff, right? They're, you know, on the outside, they, they're individuals and, and they're treated badly. And it takes a lot of effort, strain and stress for them to assert their rights because they're so few. Whereas if, if, if the courts were seeing this every day, 5, 10, 15, 20 times a day, and the police are running into it out on the streets 5, 10, 20 times a day, then everything starts to change. And that's what it's going to take uh, to make these claims. You can't be the only person out there doing it. Everybody has to do it. So we're hoping this at least motivates some of you that are listening to learn about this. And like I said, I'll try to post some resources if I can. Uh, for some interesting people out there to go and listen to. And there's a lot to listen to out there and learn this stuff. So huge and important part of this. You can't just listen to an hour-long podcast and know it, unfortunately. Wish it were that easy. Um, so what do we have this next session here, Matt? Rights are set by God or the universe, right? Universal law. Yeah, I think that's your stuff, the unalienable idea. Ah, right. Well, I like that's that word, right? Uh, so, yeah, most people, people started to say this, even though the word is written in the original constitution, unalienable, we have the stealthy tricksters of the world have changed it to inalienable. And if you think about it, what does that even mean, inalienable? Well, you Doesn't can't even... um, make it not an alien. <laughs> right? It really doesn't make any sense. Or you, if you understand a little bit of the law. You can't make it an alien or something. Right, you know what a lien is. It is when someone lien, puts a lien on your property, right? They they, they have a claim, -E basically. Right, so that's what the word is: unalienable. So your rights cannot a lien, a penalty, a fee, a fine can't be placed on your rights. That's what unalienable means. Never mind. Can't lien put a lien on my rights, and that's the way the word appears: it's un, not in, not inalienable. And you can't put a lien on. You can't put a lien on rights because rights are right. You know, they've already, they've, they've become rights because they've already gone through all the objective analysis and they've been proven by reason, by right. mathematical analysis that they're right. 
And so that's the end of the story. <laughs> right. And even further, you have to have a contract. If you if you write a contract with me and I say, okay, Matt, if, if, here's the contract. I give you this, this, and this. But if you break our contract and do this, then I can put a lien on your rights. I can charge you $1,000, right? Which is effectively your property, your person. So well, that's the other part. I would say you're, you're not putting a lien on my rights. You're just making a contract with me. Right, which is which has leaned your rights in the contract, which is effectively what they're doing with all this legal trickery stuff. With the right. privileges and benefits, they're saying, if you agree to our right. privileges and benefits, we can lean your rights. Right. So if you don't know well, your rights, you can sign up for the legal <laughs> system, and then we can give you privilege and benefits, and you won't have rights. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll take strip many strip many of them from you, many as we can. And the longer you let us do that, the more rights we'll strip. So there you have it. What do we have here for closing uh, points? Oh, you just uh, got a couple of closing points here. Yeah. So basically, if you don't take an interest in this and you just want to go back to playing video games and watching sports and drinking beers and chilling out, that, uh, that's your right, right? <laughs> you have the right to do that. <laughs> but it, it's just going to hold back the collective, right? Until more people step up, take an interest in understanding their rights, learning their rights, and standing for their rights. That's it's just if you don't do it, the listener, then you're slowing down this for everybody, right? Your friends, your family, your kids, not, your parents. Not that whoever. I want to preach. Uh, I don't. I don't like to preach that way. That say you have to do this for the collective, but uh, you might realize that it's for your own personal benefit as well. Oh, huge, right? It's for everybody's. But that's my point. It's not just for you, right? If you think ah, I'm all right with this, but it it has a rippling effect on everybody around you too. And the more people that remain in ignorance, the more we're going to have our rights infringed. Yeah? Yeah, huh? Do you want to mention this, uh, everything we think of as value point? That's yours. Yeah, well, everything of value in the world is based on human labor. Right? Everything that people charge money for, other people for, is based on human labor. That's what economics are. It's labor. So when you allow the government to fine you penalize you, tax you, they're actually penalizing your, <laughs> your, and labor is your life essence, right? You go out, perform yeah. whatever labor you perform. That's your living life essence that you're using to get this stuff called currency, which we mistakenly call money. But that's what you're allowing the, basically the, this legal system to extract your life essence. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That sounds terrible. That's and what's I mean, happening. The clearest one to understand is taxation. Yeah. Like if you agree, if you don't know your rights, don't take responsibility, you go into the legal system, you sign up as a taxpayer. Well, whoop de doo you now have to do twice as much labor to get the same amount of stuff. Yeah, if not more. Some people figure it out. We pay 70% of our income, of all the money we make in taxes. I think it's more. Sales, property. I think property. once you account for, but there's so much more than what you just pay as tax because you also have to pay the extra for the other people who are paying tax. Right. Yeah. And so you have, and they're, they still yeah. have to have a profit margin. So you have to account for that as well. So that's why it comes out of like 90 to 95, I think. Well, I don't think it's that much. Come on. Um, uh, but you're also, I think it might be. <laughs> you're also losing with the inflation, right? That That's the hidden tax. So because they're printing money out of thin air, the more they print, the less value your money has, your currency. So there's the hidden tax right. on top of it all. That's why they say it's like 70% right now. Right. So but, when you allow, when you, when you allow, again, to be involved in this co commercial system and you allow paper or digits on the screen to be to act as currency, well, okay, now you have to do more labor. You have to break your back just because right. you were lazy about your rights. And if you put in a savings account, you're losing, I think, 12% a year now, something like that, due, due to inflation. Uh, it's, Social anyway. Security is another one, uh, the 401ks. If you just want to, say, give your money to the government to take care of, okay, well, they're going to squander that and not get, get you as good of a return as you could do investing in yourself. Okay, that means you have to do more labor. Everywhere you turn, there's no end in sight. So the value in learning this is everywhere. Right. Endless. Anyway, I don't even think we need to pitch take your power back. <laughs> take your power back is about <laughs> taking your power back <laughs> when you give but, away your but, rights you give away your power 
When you yeah. sign up for privileges and benefits in the legal system, you give away your power. You have if to do, do more this, labor. Your life is worse. <laughs> if you do this course, you don't have to even hear this from us. You'll just know it in, instinctively mm -hmm. and intuitively. You'll recognize how, how we're being ripped off. Right. Be very obvious to you. Anyway, there you go. Know your rights. Booyah. Watch the Take Your Power Back video on themindblendzone.com right now. It could be the most important <laughs> video you watch all year. Go and watch it. <laughs> all right. Okay. Awesome. All right. Thanks, everybody, for giving us a listen. Hopefully, you learned a few things. And like I said, I'll try to slip some resources into the description box so you can go off and listen to some uh, of the lawful legal patriot gurus that I like. And you can find a lot more through those and other resources. And uh, you're on your way to learning more and embodying this and helping yourself, your family, your friends, and the collective at large just by learning. Right on. All right. Well, thanks, Thank Brad, you, everybody. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Thank you, everybody, for listening. And if you haven't yet, we would appreciate a thumbs up, like. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, please uh, subscribe to our uh, podcast so you'll be notified when new ones are come out every week. Right on. All right. See you, everybody. Bye-bye.